Hi, Brenda. Hi, Arely. Hi, David. Hi, Rodrigo. Hi, Manuel. Hi. Hi, teacher. How are you today? David. Ah. Es que usted cambia, señora. Hi, David. Good evening. Hi. Hi, Rodrigo. Hi, teacher. How are you? I'm fine. Excellent. How come everybody doesn't have their cameras on? Porque están de incógnitos ahora todos y todas. What happened? <laughs> Por eso le dije David Romero, señorita Maribel. Uh, I don't know the, why why have changed. Oh my goodness. I don't know. All right. Okay. So how was your day? Uh, how was your day, guys? Was it okay? Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Hi, Brenda. Thank you, Brenda. It was very good. All right. So, guys. Yeah, it was fine. It was fine. All right. ¿Y quién empieza mañana? ¿Alguien de ustedes ya empieza mañana? Todavía no van. No yet, in my case. No yet, Maribel. Ah, vaya, Maribel. Very good. What about you, Rodri? Do you? Yes, I'm. I I work at I work at in in the office. Uh, today. All right. Okay. No. Okay. Just give me a second. Que Guillermo y pero dime un segundito. Que Guillermo y Elena están escribiendo. Ajá. Dígame. Perdone. I'm I'm cooking. You're cooking. Yeah. Oh my yeah. goodness! Right now. What happened, yeah. Rodri? I'm hungry. <laughs> very hungry. <laughs> All right, very good. All right. Arely, what about you? Do you go to work or not yet? Arely, Arely, no. Robert, what about yourself, Robert? Are you staying home or you're going back to the office? Hi, Evelyn. Well, so far, I will have to do some arrangements in order to go back to the office. Okay. Uh -huh. But I'm supposed to, to go by tomorrow, but since we don't have done yet all the arrangement, we're not going to be able to, to go there tomorrow. Ah, okay. All right. Okay. In my case, I still working from home. Okay. Okay. All right. And Manuel and Evelyn? And for me, it's uh, today in the homework. Okay. The work. The work? Okay. Oh, my goodness. Okay. And for you, Evelyn? I will start tomorrow okay. in the office, but I, I have been working from my house. Yes, okay. And Brenda, are you going back or you, you keep on being at home? No, I think we're gonna be working at home for a while. Okay. All right, okay, very good, okay. Well, for the ones that are like going back tomorrow, or the ones that began today, like keep safe and just keep all the precautions that we need, all right, to be healthy and everything. All right, guys, so um, I'm very glad to see you again. So we're gonna begin the, the second half of the course. We have two more weeks, this one and the following week, and we're done. We are going to be working with the speaking section, all right? Uh, with short activities, okay? So I sent the presentation. Manuel, lo pude mandar antes, se fijo. <laughs> yes, thank you, thank you, <laughs> Well, thank you. I've been, right. I've been studying until the... Uh, ya sabía yo, por eso, yo sabía, Maribel, por eso no me gusta mandársela antes, no. <laughs> no, lo que pasa es que igual, ¿verdad? A veces me toca así como crazy, crazy, pero hoy pude mandárselas un poquito antes, all right? So... You guys have it already, so that's very good. I'm going to share it with you because I want to go through it with you guys. Hi, Gabriela. So I'm going to share with you the same presentation that I already sent to you, okay? We're talking about speak, the speaking section, guys, and we are uh, referring to uh, the activities that we can do in order to improve our ability of speaking, all right? Most of you speak really well. But, I mean, you never know. You can improve a little bit more, all right? That's the whole purpose of it, okay? So here we have pronunciation. If you have watched the video on the platform, we talk about certain uh, abilities or certain uh, like points that can improve or will help us improve our, our speaking skill in general. 
you, we talk about pronunciation, we talk about hearings, all right, we talk about uh, many other things, but right now and today we're going to be talking about pronunciation. Now, within pronunciation, we have some other features that we need to improve, all right, or that we need to work on a little bit more, okay? Remember that this is not our, this is not our first language. You can master it, but it's never going to be your first language, okay? So we need to oh, like always be working with it and like, you know, so, so we can get better as we go, all right? So here we have Manuel. Can you read, please, for me? Pronunciation. Okay. Pronunciation. You will improve your understanding of spoken English. Okay. Uh, Forget that. Uh -huh. Continue, uh, continue. And. <laughs> yeah. Es spoken. And. You see, Maribel, la, la carrera la mandé ahora. Qué barbaridad. I'm kidding. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh -huh. Spoken. Okay. Spoken English, you continue, Manuel. Mm -hmm. Spoken English and and do better on tasks that involve the listening mm -hmm. and perform perform better on the speaking task. That's right. In, continue. Mm -hmm. In order to improve your pronunciation skills, you should focus on three different areas of English pronunciation, okay. individual, individual speech sound, mm -hmm. stretch and rhythm, reach, rhythm, rhythm, mm -hmm. rhythm, thank you, and intonation. Very good. Thank you, Manuel. Okay. So for us guys, when we talk about improving our pronunciation, some of us just think about speaking, but pronunciation helps us not only on when we're speaking, but also when we're listening, all right? So that's why pronunciation is very, very important, okay? Now, as it says here, when you improve your pronunciation, you get better on the listening and performing better speaking tasks, okay? Now, for you to improve the pronunciation, we need to deal with some language features, which in this case, we're gonna talk about three. Individual speech sounds, stress and rhythm and intonation so we're gonna try to do like go as far as we can with this topic all right so here we have individual speech sounds okay what is it about it says english is spelling and this goes back to spelling guys okay remember that everything begins on the alphabet here okay now why is it so difficult for some of us when we're learning the language to actually have good pronunciation is because in English, we don't write it as we do in Spanish. We write it in Spanish as we read it in Spanish. But in English, we write it in English, but not always is pronounced the way we write it. And that's why it makes it so difficult when we're beginning to learn this language, okay? So English spelling can be focusing because it, uh, because it does not always indicate how a word is pronounced. Some letters can be pronounced in more than one way. For example, the letter C can sound like the letter K, as in the word carrot, or the letter S, as in the word decide, all right? So if you notice, it changes a little bit from word to word. Also, different letters can be pronounced in the same way. For example, the sound, what's the, what is that sound, guys? Can you see the symbol, the phonetic symbol? How does the, sound, the, how does the letter sound? Do you know? Guys? No, teacher. No. It sounds like shh. It's a shh sound. No. All right. Yeah. <laughs> it can be spelled in many different ways. All of, the, all of the following words have the shh sound, like short, mustache, patience, ocean, and sure. If you notice, all of them are different spellings. All right. So not like the sound is different. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now the sound the phonetic sound is a sh sound, all right? But the S has it, the SH has it, the CH has it, the TI has it, and the C has it. So that's why English is a little bit complicated because the sound changes. You understand what I'm saying? Guys, do you? Yeah, all right, very good. Yes, I understand. Thank you. Because English spelling is misleading, all right? What, what does misleading mean? It's like engañoso, all right? Because you say, ah, si le escribí así una palabra, I can write it like that in another word. Pues no, it's not the case, all right? 
For example, I mean, uh, it is useful for you to learn the symbols of the International Phonetic Alphabet, the IPA. Have you guys, bueno, antes que existían más los diccionarios de papel, when you open a dictionary, all right, hoy lo vemos en línea, está la palabra, the word in English, and right next to it, hay unas scribbles, all right, like, like, those are phonetic symbols, okay? Those phonetic symbols, hay muchos, pero the one that we should worry about or the one that you should learn is the IPA. It's called the International Phonetic Alphabet. Es como mundial, eso lo entiende everybody. Si usted lo estudia, everybody's going to understand you, all right? Because that there are many other uh, phonetic alphabets, but the IPA is the International Phonetic Alphabet, okay? This alphabet uses different symbols for every speech sound that is made, okay? There are several advantages to learning the IPA symbols for English. Arely, can you read the advantages, honey, please? Okay. There are several advantages to learning the IPA symbols for English. The first, the first one is you will know how to pronounce word you see in the dictionary. You will recognize words that are spelled the same but pronounced differently. You will recognize words that are spelled diff differently but pronounced the same. Very good. You, you will be able to practice the pronunciation as well as the meaning of the vocabulary word that you, you are trying to learn. The last one, you will be able to improve your pronunciation. All right. Thank you, Arely. Now, Maribel, this, uh, I'm, I'm saying Maribel because the other day Maribel was telling me about, you know, like pronunciation sometimes is difficult. Now, one way you can improve Maribel and for the rest of you guys is studying the IPA. Help you, all right? But be careful because the IPA is very complex, all right? Desde que every symbol has their own little names, all right? So you need to be careful. Okay, you want to study it? Perfect. Go for it, all right? But you need to understand that the IPA, the IPA is not so easy to understand it. But if you can learn it and you can deal with it, it for sure will help you to have better pronunciation, okay? Do you have any questions, guys? No questions? All right, very good. Let's continue here. Now, remember that we were talking that within pronunciation, we talk about individual sounds and also group of sounds, okay? Brenda, do you mind reading this for us? Individual sounds and groups of sounds. Your listeners will understand your responses better if you pronounce the individual sounds and groups of sounds correctly. These sounds are vowels, combinations of vowels, consonants, and consonant clusters. For example, vowels A, E, I, vowel combination O, I, and A, Y, consonant P, T, K, consonant cluster S, T, R, or S, C, R. All right, very good. So here, I'm, uh, what I wanted, I wanted to show you this one because when Sometimes we say, what's an individual sound, all right? And some of us will understand it and some others we won't be able to understand it, but here you have it. When we talk about individual sounds, we talk about the vowels, A, E, I, all right? When we talk about combinations of uh, vowels or vowel combination, we talk about two vowels together, like diphthongs, all right? And then we have consonants. We all know what consonants are, all right? And then we have clusters, all right? This one is for us because we don't have those, the same clusters in Spanish than we do in English, all right? So sometimes that's why it's so difficult. Again, the vowels are difficult because in Spanish we have five vowels, five sounds. In English we have five vowels and 13 sounds or even more, all right? It depends which alphabet you study, all right? So that's very important for you to keep in mind. Here, guys, I wanted you to, like, to see what the IPA um, alphabet would look like. This is the simplest way of like to look at it, all right? Here you have it. 
All right, if you go over it, I mean, you have the presentation so you can study it better. You can go on internet and write IPA eh, alphabet y le va a salir cantidad de información. All right, but here we have a very like basic example of it. All right, so they are like these symbols I was talking to you about. All right, so if you know, this, for example, this little round symbol with um, a line in between is a z, like the think. Sound. The other one, like right below it, is a, like the D sound for us, that. All right, so all of them, every single sound in English, they have made a special phonetic symbol in the IPA alphabet. Okay, so if this is for you to have, and if you notice, look at the vowel symbols. All right, this guy, this one, guys, is a, a little bit more complicated because in Spanish, as, as I said, we have five vowels, five sounds. That's it. La U nunca va a sonar de otra forma in Spanish. La O nunca va a sonar de otra forma in Spanish. But in English, you will. All right, and that's what complicates us sometimes. All right? So this is for you to have and for you to study it. All right, guys, do you understand? Yes. Yes? All right, yes. let's continue here. Now we go on, thank you. Now we go on always with pronunciation. These are the, the um, language features that we have within pronunciation. We have a stress and rhythm. Not only uh, pronunciation like such or like individuals and group sounds, but also we need to worry about a stress and rhythm. All right. Now, the more familiar we become with the language, the easier it is for us to give the right stress and the right rhythm to the speaking process, all right? If, you, if you're not really related to the language, the less stress and the less rhythm that you put into it because you're learning it, okay? Now, let's see, uh, who else I have here? Nidia, hi Nidia, I didn't see you coming in. I'm sorry, I didn't say good evening. Nidia, can you read this for us? Okay, good evening. Good evening. Stress and rhythm. In English, every word has its own stress pattern or rhythm. Some syllables, syllables. syllables. syllables mm -hmm. are given more emphasis, mm -hmm. meaning that they are longer and stronger than others. Very good. Other syllables are reduced or shortened. When you learn English words, it is important to learn their stress pattern as well as the individual sound of the word. Pronouncing a word with a, with a wrong stress pattern makes it much more difficult for listeners to understand you. All right, okay. Now, we need to be careful, guys, because when we talk about stress and rhythm, we're not talking for you to speak fast so nobody understands what you're saying. Let's be careful with fluency and not being able to understand what you're saying. Some people believe that if they speak fast, they are fluent. No, that's not true. You're just speaking fast, like a maraca, but nobody understands what you're saying. All right, so you need to be careful, all right? So thank you, uh, Nidia, for reading that, okay? So stress and rhythm. Some of the words have, a they are stressed in different parts of the word, and sometimes, and we're gonna see this, it's on, the part of this, the part of a speech, these words being used as, all right? Because some of them are going to sound differently as a verb, as if you were pronouncing them as a noun. So we need to be careful with that, all right? Okay, let's look at this. Um, let me see here. Karen, do you wanna read please? Uh, stress patterns? Hey, hello. Hi. Uh, um Every word in English has a stress pattern. Using this, the wrong stress pattern can cause misunderstanding. In some cases, the stress pattern of a word can determine its part of, of speech. Look at the following numbered pairs of words. They, they are alike except for the stress, stress pattern. The nouns are stressed on the first syllable and the verbs are stressed on the second. The stressed syllables are shown in both. All right. Yeah. Contents. Contest, uh -huh, as a noun, okay. And as a verb? 
Uh-huh. Record as now, record as a bird. Okay. All right. So, Brenda, how, thank you, Karen. How do you pronounce the, the first two? As a noun and as a verb. Contest and contest. Excellent. Contest and contest. Very different. It's the same word, all right? And like, it's spelled the same, but it's in the pronunciation or the stress is not the same, all right? And the other one, Brenda? Record and record. Very differently as a noun, as, as it is like very different as a verb, all right? So we need to be careful with that, all right? That's why it says right here, it says in some cases, the stress, the stress pattern of a word can determine its part of a speech. The part of a speech is, is it a noun? Is it a verb? Is it an adverb? Is it an adjective? What is it? All right, so we need to know that. Do you have questions so far, guys? No questions? All right. No, teacher. Excellent, let's see. Uh, I have a question. Yes, Brenda. Um, if you can go back to the previous slide. This one? Is it a, yeah. Is that a rule for nouns to have it on the first um, syllable or is it just coincidence that it, this one is like usually, that? Usually, usually the, the, uh, the nouns are stressed on the first syllable, Brenda, usually. But uh, like always, we always have exceptions. But as far as I know, most of them, they are stressed on the first syllable. All right? Like, a. Uh, when you turn on your TV, what do you use, Brenda? My control, uh -huh. my finger, I don't know. Control, <laughs> your, <laughs> your control, all right? And tell me that in your office you have over people. What do you have over people? Like use the same word as a verb now. Um, control, I don't know. Uh -huh. control. So, all right. So for one, you say the con the remote control. All right, like with the first syllable, and then you say I control people. All right. So the stress is different as a verb. So usually it's gonna go at the like the second syllable. All right. You have a remote con like a control. All right. So it's like you always usually Brenda is on the first syllable. All right. But we need to be careful with. Some of them, usually in English, that's why sometimes English is so complex because it has so many exceptions. All right, but usually it okay. should be on the first syllable. All right, let's go on here. Robert, can you, can you keep on reading for us? Okay. The stress pattern of a sentence indicates the main focus of the sentence. A change in the stress pattern of a sentence can change its meaning. Compare uh, these examples. Stop right there, Robert. Hold on, just give me a second. Remember that on the second on the second TOEFL course, we did some something similar with the guys that were with me last course. We said a sentence, and I asked them to say it differently, putting a different stress on a different word. If you do that, the meaning changes. All right. Now, Robert, when you're gonna you're gonna read the four sent. I mean, it's the same sentence. You're gonna read it four different ways, all right? So okay. whenever you see the uh, bold uh, writing, do the, like make the stress on it, okay? And then read the explanation. Let's see, Robert, uh-huh. Okay. So, uh, sorry, so about the red dress. All right. It was Sue, not Ella, who bought uh, the red dress. So you said Sue bought the red dress. Sue, yeah. you say Brenda, Maribel. Robert bought the red dress, all right? So you understand because you, you stress the, the name in this case that he or she bought it, not someone else. The, the second one, Robert? She bought the red dress. Uh-huh, she bought the dress. She did not borrow it, all right? Robert. She bought it. You say, Sue bought the red dress. There is a, a stress on that word right there. All right, the other one, uh, Robert? Sue, yeah. So bought the red dress. Right. She didn't know, she didn't buy the blue, not the pink, not the white. She bought the red dress. All right. So if you notice, everything has a different meaning. All right. So it depends what you want to be emphatic on. 
that that's where the stress should go. And the last one, Robert, thank you. Sue bought the red dress. Okay, she did not buy a red skirt. She bought a red dress, all right? I said, what did she buy? She bought a dress, all right? And the dress is like, it has the emphasis on it. And you're like, oh, really? I thought she was gonna buy a skirt. No, she bought a dress. All right, you're like, oh my God, right? So you, the stress depend. I mean, the, whatever the, the, that you put the stress on, that's the meaning of your sentence. Robert, finish up, please. Stress in the word, uh, sorry, stress in the, the wrong word in a sentence may cause confusion about the meaning you want to express. All right, okay, so you have to be careful which word you want to give emphasis to or which word do you want to stress in order to express your meaning, all right? Rhythm and patterns. Maribel, can you read it, please? Thank you, Robert. It refers to the timing pa patterns of a language. Language, Re language. Language. Excellent. Rhythm, rhythm patterns in English are based on stress. Stress words or the stress parts of words occur a regular intervals of intervals? time, mm -hmm. intervals of time, and are given an equal amount of each time. And says words or parts of words fitting between these intervals. Intervals? Yes, yes. Below are two ways to determine. To determine? Determine? Determine. Determine. Mm -hmm. determine to determine if a word should be stressed in a sentence or not. All right. Continue. One. Content. Content? Content. <laughs> content and content. Hold on. Uh, content is this one. Content is a noun. I am content. It's different. Okay. The, you see the stress is different. Uh -huh. And the part of a speech is different. Yes, go on. Content? Content words, nouns, verbs, Adjectives and adverbs are stressed or have a stressed syllable, whereas, 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 whereas function, whereas function words, helping verbs, prepositions, articles, etc., are usually not stressed. Look at the following sentence. Tom walked into the room and opened the window. All right. Very good, Maribel. If you notice, guys, we don't, we're, es que no es que gritemos, we're talked, o sea, we don't speak like that. But there is a stress on the words that we're like talking about. And it says here, the content words, usually nouns, verbs, adjectives, and adverbs, are stressed completely, or they have a stress syllable, all right? So in this case, they have uh, highlighted for you the words, in this case, Tom is a noun, walked is a verb. All right, room is also a noun, open another verb, and window is a noun. Tom on the first one, it's a noun, it's a name, and the whole thing is a stress. Tom walked into the room and opened, open, the verb open has the stress and O. All right, and window, all right, Na the noun window is only on the first syllable, window. Yeah, you see that? Do you hear that, guys? Yes? All right, let's go on here. Continue. This is number two. Maribel. Excuse me. What yes. where is mean? What where is mean? In as the in, like as in function words. Like, uh-huh. Like you say, instead of saying whereas, like in other words. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. After that. Very good. Um, Maribel, continue. To maintain a steady, steady, steady rhythm, 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 or, rhythm, uh, rhythm pattern. Speakers often use contractions and relaxed vowels. They reduce words by dropping the final vowels for consonants. They link the end of a word with the beginning of the following word. Look at the following pairs of sentences. All right, stop right there, Maribel. That's why, guys, when we're listening to movies or to songs or to poetry or to whatever you want, sometimes we're like, what? Right? Because they join the sounds, they link every single word, all right? And you're saying, oh my gosh, did they? 
I mean, sometimes we don't really understand what they said, but if we see this, the, the subtitles, we're like, oh, okay, now I understand, all right? It's not that we don't know, it's that they link all the sounds that sometimes it makes it very difficult for us to understand and watch it. Depends on the accent also. And that's what Nidia was telling me the other day. It's not the same thing to like be listening to someone from the States than from someone from England than from someone from China speaking English, all right? So very different accents. They also like have like, uh, I don't know, like they make, it makes it difficult for us to like listen and understand what they are saying, all right? Because they link the sounds a lot and depends on the accent. And we're gonna see an example pretty soon. Aha, Maribel, the, the complete sentence. The complete sentence, is he going to join us? All right, and how the sentence may sound. Join us, join us. Hoy le habla toda, así como está. Is, is, is he going to join us? Is he going to join us? All right, so it's like, what? All right, what about number two, Maribel? Así como que ve bien, bien native speaker, Maribel, ajá. <laughs> and, and I would like to stay for a while. Ajá, y la I, otra? I would like to stay for a while. <laughs> Do you want to go with him? Do you want to go with him? Uh-huh. Do you want to go with him? All right. It's like they speak fast. All right. And I'm not uh -huh. saying, I mean, that's how they wanna, speak. All right. Do you want to go with him? Do you want to go with him? So a good uh -huh. practice is for us to watch movies. That's a very good exercise that we should do. All right. Because we are still on the learning process. We oh. Okay. So that's like interesting. All right, intonation. I have a question. Yes, Brenda. All right. Uh, talking about the previous um, slide. Yes. On the first example, um, I'm not this sure one. if you can go back on the. Yeah. On the first example, it says, "Is he going?" No, the other one. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, that one. <laughs> Is he going to join us? I'm not sure if there's a rule. But talking about movies, I have seen it's very common for them to say, for example, the verb kill next to either her or him or them. They just join and the age disappear. And instead of kill her, they said killer. Yeah. Or just kill her or kill it, kill him or mm -hmm. kill him. Right. So I'm not sure if, if there's like a rule for the sound of the H to disappear when it's the case because they did the same on this one. Instead of yeah. is he, it's just easy. Right, right. To be honest, um, Brenda, I would not, I mean, I wouldn't be like able to answer that question exactly. I guess it's just how they speak it. And for them, it's just they drop it. All right. Now, why do they drop it? I, I would lie to you if I tell you that I know the answer. <laughs> I really don't know, all right? But they do that, they do, and you're right. I mean, that's why, and Brenda has seen it in movies, she says, all right? That's why I, one of the best schools for us is to watch movies. Maribel the other day was telling me I really don't like watching movies or TV, but if this is a learning process, I mean, do it as homework. Don't do it as because you like it, all right? Because we need to improve it, all right? And you know what? And I do that all the time. like. I watch movies with my daughters and I'm watching them in English in sometimes the subtitles because you keep on learning. I mean, you don't know every single word. And I've said this to you before, not even in Spanish. The other day, my sister told me a word in Spanish. I'm like, what is that? I have never heard that word before. I, can, I, I cannot even remember the word. And I'm like 41 years old. And I didn't, I mean, I had never heard the word before. All right. So I'm like, oh, cool. I learned something new today. All right. So if that happens to us in Spanish, of course, it's that, that's going to happen to us in English. All right. So it's very interesting to keep on learning and to keep on watching movies and be reading the subtitles, not because you don't understand what they're saying, but then you're like seeing it and you're gonna see things like what uh, Brenda was telling us about, that they drop the H somehow, all right? Why do they do that, Brendita? I really have no idea. I guess they just, it, I don't, they don't pronounce it. All right, I guess so, all right. Okay, let's see. Um, Thank you. 
Uh, 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 hi, Freddy. Gabby, can you read for us, please, intonation patterns? Hi, Miss. <laughs> intonation patterns. In bold change in pitch. Mm -hmm. They are different from the pitch. Change in stress and syllables because they frequently cover longer unit of speech, mm -hmm. such as clauses or a complete sentence. Sometimes the pitch change occurs within a single word. Mm -hmm. A range of information can be understood through intonation patterns. A falling pitch at the end of the sentence signals Signal. that the speaker has signals that the speaker has completed a statement or an idea. Mm. Fallen speech is also used at the end of the Y question. WH question, yes. Arrives at the end of a sentence signs that no. the speaker is speaking a yes or no question. Mm. All right. So this is very interesting, guys. And you know what? This, I can tell you that this exact, what, it, what we're studying here right now, this, you were supposed to see this for the people that, have taken like English courses before when you were in basic levels. So this is, this should not be new. All right. So when you have a WH question word, all right, it goes down the intonation or the, in this case, the intonation patterns should go down. When you have a yes, no question, it goes up. This shouldn't be new for you, but it's here because sometimes we forget it. And sometimes our mother language in this case is Spanish doesn't help us much in the link in this case in our uh, English language process because in Spanish we don't make right questions we don't make proper questions as we should like make them in Spanish we say Nidia no quiere comer question I'm giving the answer within my question all right so usually in Spanish our questions don't sound like questions so when we're faced with English that they make the intonation we kind of struggle with it at the very beginning because we're like, ¿Cómo exageran, verdad? No, no exageran. We should do it that way, but we don't do it. All right, not in our, like, in this case, Spanish. All right, continue. Uh, Julia, can you continue now, please? Mm, okay. Thank you. Uh, the arise at the end, after the, uh, arise at the end, the second paragraph. Okay. Arise at the end of, of a phrase or pause in the case that the speaker has more to say. A drop indicates that the speaker is finished. Ah, all right. So can you read the uh, sentence? I went to the market. I bought the dozen eggs and I, then I came, I came home. Very good. Sometimes intonation. We, yeah, go, go, go ahead, Julia, go ahead. I'll finish later. Okay. Uh -huh. Intonation pattern can signal the speaker's attitude. Attitude. They can also sing attitude. They can also signal the speaker's emotions. The speakers show their certain and enthusiasm. Very good. Anger. Ang anger. Anger. Excitement. Excitement. Mm -hmm. Etc. Throw, mm -hmm. throw subtle shifts in intonation. Very good. All right. So this, we, we saw this also on uh, TOEFL too. All right. That sometimes when we listen to the speaker, we can tell if they are certain, if they're enthusiastic, if they are angry, we talk about emotions. All right. You may not be seeing me, but if I say something, it might sound rude. And then you say, well, maybe it's Jessica's having a bad day. All right. So of my intonation or because of the attitude that you listened within my uh, sentence in this case all right so intonation we play with this guys and and it's not that we exaggerate them when we speak everyday normal language but you should be aware of it all right so don't forget that this happens when we're talking all right now these guys and i know that we took a while reading all the uh, theory but i wanted you to go through it this is what we have to do now i'm going to send you to your groups we have like about uh, not even well 10 12 minutes all right so let's advance at least on the first exercise it says read the following passage out loud so i want you to read it to your partner okay and underline the words or phrases that you are uncertain 
how to pronounce, not the meaning here, it's the pronunciation, or that you have difficulty pronouncing. So what I want you to do is, let's focus on this exercise only tomorrow we can keep on, we are going to keep on working with this presentation tomorrow, okay? So read it out loud, all right, and underline the words that you have, that you are uncertain how to pronounce or that you have difficulty pronouncing, okay? This is the first exercise. This is the only one that probably we're gonna be able to finish tonight, okay? Please, like either, uh, if you cannot underline it, well, you could underline it here somehow, but if not, just take notes of the words that you have, uh, that you are uncertain about their pronunciation, okay? Do you understand what you're going to do right now? Yes? Okay. Yes. So we're yes. gonna go yes. to the groups. All right, guys, let's go right now. Everybody has a presentation. If you want me to like share it with you, let me know, okay? All right.
on the side. For safety, a stairway usually has a handrail on one side resting on vertical supports called baluster. Baluster and hand, Freddy, hand Freddy, rail. Freddy, 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 Freddy. Yes. Espere, give me a second. Es que acabo de oír una, una palabra ahí. Baluster. ¿Por dónde iba? The horizontal doors. For safety, a stairway usually has a handrail, one handrail on uh -huh. one side, rest, vertical supports called baluster. <laughs> ah, cold, cold. No, es que hoy sí lo pronunció bien. Pero era cold. cold. Uh -huh. Acuérdese de la, la pronunciación de los pasados. Yes, eh, ahí. Uh -huh. And I have to. Regulares. Yeah. Ah, very good. Yeah, you have to. Yeah, very good. Okay, continue. Continue. Thank you. Okay. Baluster and handrails together are known as banisters. Banisters. And banisters. Mm -hmm. And these are firmly support, supported. 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 Is it supported? Okay. Supported at the bottom on top of the stairs by heavy, heavy posts. Very good. Whereas these features are common to most stairway types, the actual layout 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 of the stairway will vary depending on the space and aesthetic yep. consideration. If the stairway is turned back on itself a total of uh, 180 degrees, the landing, which is the flat area at the top of the stairs, will be twice the width of the stair, the stairs. If the stairs turn at right angle, angles, the landing angles, angles, angles yeah, the angles. landing will be the width of the third. Perhaps the most elegant layout is layout, called a spiral layout. Layout is called a spiral a stairway. A spiral. This, a spiral. Yeah. A stairway. This structure usually rises around rises, a central rises, Freddy? Oh, so yeah. Rises around a central vertical post to which tapered trees are attached and their narrow end. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, I think that we have to study more the rules of past regular yeah. verbs. In yeah. You need to like remember that I mean those are very, very, very important, Gabby and, and Freddy, all right? Uh, remember those rules of the pronunciation of the past of regular verbs. You have those rules, Freddy? Yes, I have it. All right. Do you, Gabby? Yes, I have it. All right. Very good. Okay. Very good. All right. Did Gabby have a chance to read or only Freddy? Yes. No, yes. You're ready. Right. Are you ready? Ah, very good. You're ready. Right. Very good. All right. So, did you guys underline the words that you were uncertain about pronunciation? Or oh, did you well, copy them somewhere? I have some. Yes. Okay. Someone. All right. <laughs> For, okay. Just give me a second here. Okay. Go on, uh, Freddy and Gabby. You have the presentation anyway. Answer the questions about your performance in exercise P1. Exercise P1 is the one that we just did, all right? Which individual sounds were difficult to pronounce, all right? Which combinations of sounds were difficult to pronounce? Which individual words were difficult to and why? Are there any patterns of pronunciation difficulty, all right? Uh, so what I want you to do, you have, the, uh, you have this. You have to go back all the way here to vowels, vowel combinations and everything for you to be able to understand these ones, but based on your reading. This is very personal. It's not like Freddy is like, you're gonna have the same words for Freddy, uh, Gabby, right? So these answer are very personal and then you can share with Freddy what you guys responded, all right? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. Hi, Nidia. Hi, Manuel. Hi, Robert. Did you finish? No, no we... Uh, no, teacher. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. tour for Robert. Ah, I was going to, to so read the last question paragraph. about pronunciation on, on a couple of words, just like noising. 
Uh huh. Nothing. No, nothing. No Where thing. is it? Where is it? No thing. As an as a no thing. Yes. It's no thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. The other one is stringer. Stringer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, hand yeah. drill. Hand drill. Where is it? In it the second paragraph. Has, uh, in the second it's paragraph. Hand rail. Usually, I think so. Handrail. Hand Handrail. 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 Mm -hmm. Handrail hand is like the agarradero. A handrail. Mm -hmm. Baluster stringer. Yes. Okay. All right. Is inclined or inclined? In, uh, where is it? Let me see it. In the okay. first paragraph, I think. Inclined mm -hmm. or inclined. Inclined structure. Inclined. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nothing? Nothing, yes. Is vary or vary? Uh, this can vary, vary. Vary. Yeah. In the navel, the navel is another. Which one, Manuel? Enable. Enable or it's enable. It's enable. Enable. It's enable. Ena enable. Enable. Enable, yes. Enable. 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 All right. Okay, thank you. Yes, very okay. good. Guys, Robert? So I'm sorry, we need to go because it's time to go, but don't worry because tomorrow we're going to continue with the same presentation, okay? Because I want to work with the other exercises about pronunciation okay. anyway, all right? So I'm sorry, guys, but it time flew today. Oh, my goodness. Yes. All right. We're going to go back right now, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, guys, I'm so sorry. I need to go. I have another class right now. What I want you to do, if you can, the only thing I want you to work on today or tomorrow before the class is this, not the rest of the exercises. Please don't because I want you, I really want you to work with your partners, okay? This was the reading, guys, that we had, we just read, all right? If you were not able to read it, you can do it at home like by yourself and then try to answer these questions. These are very personal about you and about the reading we just read, okay? So try to answer those. This is, as I said, this is not about a group work. These questions are like about, okay, what was difficult for me? Did I find any individual sounds difficult to pronounce for me, all right? Why was it, uh, which individuals were, were difficult to pronounce for me and why? Why do, I, why do I think I have this problem pronouncing, okay? So try to do this. This is going to be like the only homework that I, I want to assign tonight. The rest, please don't work on it. Don't listen to the listenings that we have because I want to work on that tomorrow, okay? The whole week is going to be like based on speaking and everything. So we have enough time to cover everything, all right? Thank you so much for being with me on another Monday, guys. This is like almost, we're halfway. So that's very, very nice. So I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you for being with me and keep safe for the ones that are going back to work tomorrow. And if you don't have to, please don't. All right. So I'll see you later, guys. Thank you. Good night. See you. See Bye. you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.